we're back. Yep. Greetings. All right. So I was busy when you were away. I was busy while you're here. Still more measuring. But look what happened. It went under the car and it wasn't all by itself. I am just stoked. I did not plan for this. Look how it straddles the original frame structure. It slip fit right in there. I did not, I did not plan for that. On this side, there was a little doubler plate because the steering box bolted through here. So I took that outside plate off of that and it slipped right in. So I was able to start welding. See, I welded it here. I mean, of course, I measured everything out, squared it, etc. So it's it's even left to right, uh, front to back. That 21 inch measurement is exactly what I was hoping. It's 21 right to this edge. And then I just did the X measurement thing. Measured it crossways like so, you know, X and X, and then tacked it in the front right there. So the plan today is to get this rolling, do a little test assembly, and uh, call it quits for now. We're waiting on some mechanical parts. So, uh, i.e. the engine, we can say. It's not going to be a V12. I'm not going that route. Sounds like an expensive thing to work with. Uh, I wanted something modern, just like I'm doing with the running gear. So probably a big block Ford with an automatic transmission. There's plenty of room in here, plenty of power, very reliable, get parts everywhere, keep it simple. So that's where I'm at. Uh, the last part of this, you know, what I did to get it to this point, the tire pressure is equal in all four tires. And I, I made sure that the car was level, you know, as level as this floor will provide. You know, a lot of people have mentioned that. Well, how do you know that the floor is level? It's like, well, I don't, but I don't have a chassis jig that could support a car like this. So if you're a guy in the garage like me, you build it like this. And it's going to work. Anyway. Ian's not acting when he comes to you being a guy in a garage. Yeah. Yeah, true story. Look, the floor's got a crack in it. So I built the car away from the crack. Right? So this, I, I'm assuming it's reasonably good. I put a level on the cross member of the car, and it, it says, yes, it's level. So there you have it. So what I did was I measured the drip rails in a number of places, measured the fender edges, I measured the chassis structure pieces in the body, in the cross members, you know, everything. The math adds up. I was going to say, so you did a lot of math. The math adds up. I mean, look at it. I don't want the car to scrape on the ground. I, I want a classic look. You know, the tail will probably drop down, the tail dragger style. I don't think the car needs to go any lower than this. Once that grill's in place, that's fairly low, but it'll have plenty of room to raise up if you're going in a, you know, odd driveway entrance or whatever, you know. I don't want the car to scrape the ground. Kind of over that. Not really. <laughs> I was I like, no, you're look. not. I just want that classic look. So what I'm up to now, you could look in here and you'll see where I attached. If you have not cut on yet. So I was able to uh, so to weld across here, so able to weld down there. So now I'm going to plate this with these eighth inch plates. All right, probably come in with a gusset later to support that even further. And then with this, oops, both sides like that. So again, this is a unibody. So there's a little bit of structure in the front that I've tacked onto. And then that, it gets welded in. And by the time all that, I might, you know, who knows, maybe put a little tie to grab the body like it used to have here. I still have the pieces I cut out, so I could always just put them back in slightly modified. But that being said, we got these two plates cut and it's time to do some bending. And see this one here, I've been lumping it with the big hammer. Uh, again, used steel, right? This is 3 16 mega strong. It's got a little pits in it. That ain't bothering me. I'll put this in the car. We got our paper template made and you know it's usually pretty close to where the steel's gonna end up. 
but you can see that this needs to be bent down. So I'm going to start by bending it right there. Look at that. Hold it down. 316th plate. That's a bit of a job. I was going to say, how do you do that? Big hammer. First, we'll start with a little leverage. And we'll begin to abuse it. Oh my God. See if we don't break the vice off the table this time. Oh my God. <laughs> All there is to it. See if that does something. Yeah. This will be a lot more bent. I was gonna say I didn't think it looked bent enough. If you want my naive and uneducated car related opinion. I do. That's my opinion. You know what opinions are like. Just like they say, get a bigger hammer. See if that did something. That's pretty substantial. There it is. Cool. I like it. So I'm gonna do a little relief cut. I got that one marked up for a little cut because there's some welds I wanna work around that are there. So uh, grab your eye muffs and do this. So this is a little notch for the weld that's on the car already. Trying to save the heavy work for the corded grinder because I don't want to beat those cat tools to death. I really like them. Use it for sheet metal, finer detail. Gonna get in the car and take a little more rust off. I'm gonna start by putting those end caps on and then do the top caps. I'm gonna have to lift this up to weld it complete. But for conversation and entertainment, I'm gonna put the hood and grill and headlights on and roll it outside. That's the front plates to box that in. I'll put the tops on. Somebody mentioned that there wasn't going to be a room for the bell housing or the exhaust to exit the car. And I'm like, what, what video are you even watching, man? Look at all that room in there. Maybe he was thinking the temporary braces. Remember, Remember these angle irons come out. I mean, this front one may not have to. 
that could stay, but that comes out. So look, there's just tons of room. Wait, so these stay? You're right, only this cross and that cross come out. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's like, you imagine your bell housing, your engine, your exhaust. Like, look, it's freaking two V wide. This thing, it, maybe on TV, it does not look that no, big. Look at my giant Hulk. Right, of Ian's a, a pretty big fella. Look, <laughs> lots of room. <laughs> you could definitely hide a body in there at this point. <laughs> oh, oh no, wait. Thought my dyslexia struck again. Fortunately, I did it right. Sometimes I get carried away. The ego is a tough thing to deal with when you're a machine like this. multiple layers of sheet metal that come together to create the structure of the Zephyr. So that's why I'm sitting in one place and burning into the layers. Get a good grab. Yeah. Put a clamp on that, bring her down. You hear the car creak a little as it finds its new home. That's a good grab to start that off. Hop on this side. Clamp that down. You know what that means? Say that again? You know what that means? What does that mean? This is the first time in decades, many decades, possibly from before I was even born, that this car has two axles under it and will roll. She deserves it. He, she, we don't know yet. The story I got from the fella's sons, and this may not be 100% correct because I was just all starry-eyed, was that he got the car in the 60s, so I'm not sure when he took the axles out from under it, you know, the rear axles specifically. But it had been sitting for many a year. Now, if I take this jack out and it falls on the floor, you can blame my and dive. Wait, it's low. It's real low. Let me put a jack under here. So then you know you're in the ballpark when you can't get the floor jack out. Come on. Come on. Just a little love. Once in my life. Somebody saw a picture of the floor jack outside and asked how old it was. Because I beat the heck out of my equipment. It's probably like four years old. It looks like an antique. Drum roll, please.
Yes. I low key want to cry right now. It lowered a little bit too, which is what I was hoping. So that's a good lowered stance. Heck yes. Nothing's rubbing. I might put a little spacer to bring that tire out this way a little bit, but it looks darn good to me. This is very exciting today. I'm stoked. I hope I can find that little chin piece in the back because that'll really complete the look. Give me one sec. I'm going to walk around the back and try to locate this piece of sheet metal. I think it's laying back there. I think it's in the car. Nice walk, though. Beautiful day. Oh, there it is, right where I left it. <laughs> so organized. You surprised yourself. <laughs> We can't find some bolts. So this car got hit right here. Fortunately, it didn't get the grill. It might have got hit when the grill was off. So I didn't weld this. Check this out. This was my first hint. So when the frame came in, uh, see I welded here? Mm -hmm. See the space? Mm -hmm. Look at here. Oh. Almost a quarter, half inch. It's got to be pushed out. So it went bing and knocked that in. So. I bought the port of power. I might just squeeze that out now that this is all connected. I might push it. But that all goes with fitting up the sheet metal and the grill. Let me get two little screws in the fender. See how that develops. I'm very happy with this ride height. So I do love lowered cars. What we're doing here, I don't really support it to be obnoxiously low, in my opinion. Because we are, uh, like when we go to the Santa Maria, the West Coast Customs, uh -huh. you see a lot of cars done in this style where they're just like mostly original, fairly conservative paint, and just low. Wow. Some some lay out, but some are just, uh, you know, good boulevard cruiser all around. That's This would be fun to uh, drive in Santa Maria. Perfect for that show. Yeah, I mean, I you get some really wild customs too, but there's a huge, huge attendance of cars done like this. Yeah. I know Penny would love that, to see us cruising. <laughs> It's a vibe. Yeah, see, look at that. Ah. See? Mm hmm I bet this was all taken apart and then that got thinked. Hopefully it wasn't a guy with the tractor. We know how that guy rolls around sometimes. Let me get my tool. I just want to make a comment about some of your workspace. And my port of power? Well, besides that. Nothing's interesting, but look at Ian's newest, latest work table he has set up. Not to like about that. I've been trying to avoid it at all costs, getting oh, these shots. There's that. <laughs> Probably don't want to hang yourself up on that. I put a glove on it. <laughs> Everything's a work table if you try hard enough. I guess. But I, I have learned before backing up to get these shots to check for ragged corners. Take anti-dives advice and check before you back up. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, gotta man. watch all the videos to be in on the jokes. I know where my uh, seat is. Is it out back? Okay, we're back. Ian had to find my chair. It's crazy. It's worse than a 10 millimeter socket. Do you know about that joke? No. So the 10 millimeter socket is something that's a very important uh, number, especially in imported cars and modern cars. And that's the joke. The most important socket is always on the loose. So I'm going to pour to power this, push it. You've seen me use this before, correct? Yeah, in an episode. Yeah. Like, I think about a year ago. That's a hydraulic ram. That's way too big. I just okay. So rough estimation. 
So I think a good strong spot will be on the new frame. Push that little button right up against the sheet metal. Try to expand it. This thing still works. Be hilarious if it doesn't work. There it is. Cool. Oh look, close up the gap. Perfect. I'm gonna hammer this, see it fold it a little bit. I could get in there and cut that off, but we're right where we want to be, so I'm just gonna ding it in a little bit. That. So see, space is about a chisel width right there, and about a chisel width right there. I'm gonna do a quick weld on that. I got that located where I want on the chassis rail. See, this is pretty much still out of shape. And uh, look at that. So that is pulled up. It's probably squeezing that whole thing in. Put the floor jack under here. Oh yeah, this whole thing is up. I'll put the floor jack under there with a big flat brace. Get out the big hammer. I think I'm gonna leave this in there too. What do we have? We need something very plate-like, very strong. Well, I threw them all in the scrapyard. Oh, here we go. It's Jamie's Jeep's trailer hitch. Wow. I told you that thing was way bigger than you ever needed. Sweet. Somebody said when I uh, told you it was going to be violent, you said you were excited, so... <laughs> This might be violent. <laughs> Any of my earmuffs. <laughs> Surgical precision. Modify it. Can't argue that point. Sweet. Getting closer. I'm gonna hammer out this. Ooh, there's an inner wall. Mm. That might be tough. Let's try that with the chisel. Okay, I've been around the block a few times. Put that hammer in here. to dolly that. I have to cut this open and get in there and repair that. Maybe I'll just pour to power this. Maybe I'll just hit it. Yeah, I can see right there. Just gonna put a clamp on that for conversation's sake, but I think that's close. It's getting closer, yeah. yeah. yeah so those bolt holes line up. There it is, look at that. Ready? Ta-da. Love it. Now just Got that port of power in there, so try to just give a little relaxation to the whole panel. We'll take that out, see if that grill fits. One of the crown pieces of jewelry for this car. Been keeping this tucked away under the workbench in a very safe corner. Because look, it's uncrushed. So a little narrow at the bottom. I have to take that port of power, open it up a bit more. Yeah, look at it from this angle. 
got to come out like a pinch. So, how do we do that? This thing is bigger than that. Oh, I can see this is twisted right here, yeah. I might just cut this. Rather than fussing with the whole, oh no, because I welded, I'm welded now. I can see right here, this is, this bumper probably took a hit. Ah, so yeah, you can see it. I bet I can push on that though. Oh, it's gonna work, look at that. Yes. Just when you thought it was all over, it's gonna just make it. But this thing has been a very good bang for the buck. I've had this for years. Should take care of things better. Here we are. Oh yeah, totally gonna work. Different end on this. Maybe that rubber end. It's right over there. I was saying roughly an inch. I'm gonna get this set, measure it. It'll be a lot easier to correct to bring it together if I set it too wide. So I'm gonna really go for it. So we're at nine. It's pushing that side out, which isn't a bad thing. We need to push that side out. So what if you turn the ported thing the other way? Does it matter? Yeah, it's not gonna make any difference. This is really stressed. I'm gonna have to hit that. It's just it's doing that, so the least that the least resistance is what moves. Ah. So this is twisting. Yes. So I said nine, 10. Work this out and see what happens. Comes back together. Not a deal breaker. I think we're gonna spread this. We're gonna put the grill in and see what it does. See without the clamp, this is fit now. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Spin this into the car. Open that up. What happens now? It's like right there. American vehicles. Mm -hmm. Can't even imagine what it would cost to replace this grill. If you can, I'm installing it with a sledgehammer. Yeah, it's being fussy. Yeah, look at this. Way out of shape. I was led to believe that this was pushed in, but look at that. The rock thickens. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Who knows? Maybe this car was crashed. Maybe he found a replacement grill. Hear what I'm saying on that? Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. I mean, this is correctable. That's not terrible. It's just an interesting development. Every car's got a story. And 
if you know cars, they're going to fight you every step of the way. So I might just leave that port of power in the car for the time being. Just let this Zephyr think about it. When you leave that in there, will it potentially kind of find the metal memory and kind of stretch it out? Uh, well, it's better than not leaving it. Yeah. I mean, it's really probably just going to sit there, but yes, your, your ideas do hold some merit, especially if we go to repair that, you know, if I start pushing and pulling, that is a solid brace on the bottom. This is going to come in definitely. So that's, that's easy. I can do some, uh, actually do that with some tie down straps, but for now, I want to roll this outside and see what it looks like. We're not here for crash and dent repair. Right. We weren't expecting that. It's a whole different rabbit hole. Let's put that hood on. But if the car was crashed, it didn't get hit so hard because these are the original fenders. So maybe just took it in the bumper and. And I think I need some rubber gaskets for the headlights, but they're here. You don't want to drop that. Are you telling me for me or me for you? Telling me for me. They always come to life once you put the eyeballs in them. Classy lassie. Let's roll it outside. That looks like it's aimed in the right direction. First time roll out. Oh yeah. See a car this big doesn't need to sit on the ground. The back will go down a bit, but that's as low as it'll go. I'm happy with that. And Ian swears he's not gonna chop it. I'm not gonna chop it. Nope, not gonna do it. Nope. Yeah, I love how the tires fit in the fender. I moved them a little bit forward from stock, which is done a lot when you really lower a car. Wheelbase is a little bit stretched. Dynamite. Super stoked. Look at that face. Yeah, it's such a weird design. It's awesome. Like, I just love it. I love this super deep cavity. It's like, you just don't see that. This, this project was kind of uh, just came in unannounced, right? It was a good opportunity and I just couldn't let it sit in the back of the shop without being able to roll it around. So that was our intent. Uh, we're going to put this in the container for storage. Of course, a little dabbling with the steering, get that stuff going. But um, we got another project. It's been sort of a long term hang around and it's in the same vein. I think it's 38, 37, 38. Some of you will recognize it. But that car is a driver, it's a steerer. Client picked it up. We're going to get that thing in action next.